Good morning, Tammy Cinematics Gains. If you're new here, I ramble, <laughs> I lose track of what I'm talking about, I go off on tangents, I get distracted by shiny things out my window. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is a spinning episode. Um, I'm not gonna be spinning, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna show fiber. So this is the fiber episode. And Theo is breathing heavily because he's been playing with Benny all morning. Um, if you're new here, Theo is my standard schnauzer and Benny is my great Pyrenees lab mix that was supposed to be an Irish wolfhound mix, but whatever. He's cute and fuzzy and he loves me. So he's welcome in the house. <laughs> even though he sheds everywhere, everywhere. So yeah, fiber, there's probably dog hair in it. Just <laughs> I don't know how his hair gets to the places that it gets, but oh my God, Benny's hair is everywhere. And I'm used to having a giant schnauzer and they don't shed much. So yeah. And then, you know, Theo's a standard schnauzer. So schnauzers don't shed much they do shed so all the people that are like oh they're hypoallergenic they don't shed yes they do yes they do they just don't shed a lot so yeah schnauzers are the best um <laughs> the best i don't think i would mind having carpet if i just had theo but i adopted benny so there you go um hi good morning <laughs> coffee go 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 that way love you okay <laughs> Oh, and I, mm, if you don't follow the Instagram, I went to the doctor yesterday to have my headaches checked. I finally have migraine medication, you guys. It only took 40 years. <laughs> <sighs> There's an issue with my insurance, though, so I couldn't pick it up last night, but I can pick it up today. But I have migraine medication. I'm so happy. Hope it works. <laughs> There's like, it, what does she call it? It's a migraine cocktail. She even put it on my paperwork. It's a migraine cocktail. So there's like instructions on like, I have to take one when my headache hits. And if that doesn't knock it out, then I take the second one. And then if I have a headache with certain symptoms, then I take the third one. <laughs> it's a cocktail. Um, but I'm going to try it. She told me I had to stop taking uh, the Excedrin migraine that I normally take and the Advil dual that I take. Um, I have never, like, I've had headaches since childhood, but I've never actually been on medication for them before. I just take over-the-counter stuff because I have a high pain tolerance. So if I can knock off the edge enough to tolerate it, then I, you know, go about my life. I, I just know that, like, when I have a really bad headache, there are certain things I just can't do or it's going to get really bad. Like, if I have a really bad headache, I can't go to a movie because it's going to make it worse. Things like that. Or like go driving long distances, whatever. Anyway, so I went to the doctor for that and then to get my blood rechecked because I think I told you guys like my blood, I have too many red blood cells apparently. And that it's, it's, I mentioned blood cancer. That's one thing, but there's another condition. I can't remember what it's called. It's poly something theory, I don't, whatever it's called. But if by chance my blood has not changed <laughs> to normal, then she said what I would need to do to deal with that, like if it's a thing, I would just have to donate blood often um, to like <laughs> get rid of some of the extra blood in my body, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I have too many red blood cells. Um, so they're rechecking my blood work to see if that went away and also to see if I still need to be on uh, prescription vitamin D. So we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> and while I was there, my thumb has been hurting like right, like and my thumb and my wrist, like right here for like a week. And it's gotten to the point now where I can't knit for very long. So I had her look at that too. And apparently I have what's called gamer's thumb, which I remember from the eighties, like Atari with the joysticks. Um, so I need to give my hand a break. She said I can keep knitting, but when I'm not knitting to put my brace on and she said I could knit with the brace on, but it's a little, I'm a little slow. I tried it last night, even though I wasn't supposed to. Cause she told me to like take a break for a couple days and just chill with the brace. Um, yeah, I want to work on my sweater. So I didn't listen, but, um, yeah, so I'm just giving my hand a break and I'm supposed to wear this when I sleep so I don't like crush it while I'm sleeping. Um, but yeah, it's just the tendons irritated right now. 
and yeah and then I'm tight all through here so it's really uncomfortable so if I do this while I'm talking to you guys it's because my shoulder got really tight it happens while I'm driving it happens when I sit for too long it's just something in here is super tight but one of the head like the headache medications is a muscle relaxer so she thinks that'll help with the arm so we'll see what happens like I said I couldn't pick my medication up yesterday because the insurance company but I can pick it up today so hopefully this will go away um yeah so yeah that's why I'm wearing this <laughs> it's my, I mean, it sucks for like washing yarn too, cause I, like the pressure of picking things up like this to like wash them just pulls on the, it hurts, man. <laughs> so, and that's a little annoying cause now I'm like, I have yarn, like I have enough yarn for the yarn crawl, but I've had some inspirations recently and I've been dying a little bit more and I've got some more of that Muppet yarn the boucle so I got some more Muppet yarn and I've been wanting to dye that I got like two more packs but just the lifting and the can't do it right now so hopefully this will only be a bother for like a week or two and then I can like super dye stuff um <laughs> for the yarn girl which reminds me I need to order ink so I can print labels anyway eight minutes and the fiber that I'm dyeing is Snip Pick Stroll. Oh, see the Velcro. The Velcro. <laughs> I might take this off while I film. Because it's just going to get stuck to the fiber. That's not good. Um. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, no. <laughs> Fourth time's a charm. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Damn it. Um, what was I talking about? Why I decided to spin? Why I decided to spin? Okay. I want to create my own yarn for color work. And, you know, projects like the night shift, things like that. I want to use my own yarn. Um, so I can dye colors that I want to use. Or put colors together from the fiber that I've purchased uh, to use. So that is why I decided to spin. Um, I've been here before. <laughs> uh, the first thing I bought was that drop spindle, which is now has a new home. Um, <laughs> but yes, I did not like the drop spindle um, and decided that spinning was just not for me. Um, but the urge to try it was still there. So I took that spinning class with the Turkish spindle <laughs> and that finally clicked um between that span of time I had bought um a Dreaming Robots Eel 6 e-spinner because it was affordable or more affordable than a regular wheel and I figured it would be less for me to keep track of because like with the regular wheel you got to treadle and do the hand stuff whereas with an e-spinner no feet involved and especially with me with my knee issues like let's just use hands <laughs> like this is great um but even that sorry my hand hurts <laughs> i talk with my hands um it's like do i put my brace back on while i before i grab i don't know <laughs> just talking my hands <laughs> sorry comfort um so that didn't help <laughs> okay okay so like I learned like using the e-spinner I couldn't get I couldn't figure it out okay like I was just playing with it trying to figure out what I was doing learned that I wasn't drafting correctly um, my tension was all over, like, I couldn't get the thing to take up the yarn, and that was because my tension was off, and it just took a little bit of, I'm not a patient person, <laughs> so it just took a little bit of patience and practice for me to get the hang of it, and now I'm cool with my e-spinner, but of course, I didn't become cool with my e-spinner until I bought the wheels, <laughs> so I finally was like, 
okay, the E spinner isn't working for me. The drop spindle didn't work, but the Turkish spindle does. So I'm like, okay, Turkish spindle, cool. And then I was like, well, maybe a real wheel. Well, I mean, an E spinner is a real wheel too. A normal, no. A typical, there we go. A typical spinning wheel may work better for me than the E spinner. Bought the, bought the regular wheel, <laughs> typical style <laughs> wheels. And while I was waiting for the drive band, cause I really want to use that sidekick. Um, <laughs> I did try using the joy and I, I'm still trying to get the hang of the, the, doing all the things at the same time. Um, and I got frustrated. Like I tried like, because, all right. <laughs> I got the sidekick, but it needed a new drive band and I was waiting for it to be shipped. In the meantime, the Joy arrived, so I decided to go ahead and try that one. In trying that, trying to do all the things at the same time, I got frustrated. And when I get frustrated, I put things aside so I don't get super frustrated and break things. Um, so <laughs> I set it aside and was like, I'm going to play with the e-spinner for a bit. And I got the hang of it. Like I finally figured out how to use it. And so the yarn that was on my Turkish spindle, I applied it on my e-spinner and I got this. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. It's so cute. Um, and then I dyed some fiber and I got this. And I like that so much. <laughs> Did a whole one. I'm so proud of myself, y'all. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I want to use it so bad. So this ended up being 96 yards, um, I think. I tried to calculate the thing with the nitty knotty. I, I think it's 96 yards. Um, I want to use it. I know you're not supposed to use your first hand spun, but why spin it if you're not going to use it? <laughs> and, you know, technically these are my first, so I can just not use these because I mean, they're so tiny. What would I use them in? I might, I might make coasters. Um, maybe I will. And then I can see how it knits up. Okay. So I'm going to knit these up, <laughs> but I did a full skein. And I'm sure it's overspun or whatever you call it. I know it's over twisted, whatever. I don't think I made rope though. Cause a lot of like uh, spinning videos I've been watching on YouTube, people are like, oh, I overspun it and made rope. How do you know? <laughs> like, does it mean like, is it rope if it has no bounce? Like, I feel like this is bounce. Um, I don't know. It doesn't feel as airy as the other people, <laughs> like the other yarns I have that look hand spun that are like mill produced or whatever. I mean, it's not as bouncy as those, but I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's so pretty. Look at it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I like it. Um, but yeah, I made this. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm having fun. Um, the drive band for my sidekick has arrived and I just need to, I downloaded the instructions on how to replace the drive band and I just need to sit in here and do that, which I'm going to hopefully do today. Um, and then I'm going to play with that one and see if I get as frustrated as I did with the Ashford Joy. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which one I like. <laughs> Cause I'm thinking I don't need two. Cause if you watch my unboxing videos, I bought two by mistake. How does one do that? Especially with the expense, like <laughs> credit cards. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm, anyway. Um, and I mean, I rationalized it. Whereas if I sell enough yarn during the yarn crawl to cover the cost of the wheel, then it's cool. <laughs> so it's cool. Um, it'll balance itself out is my logic on that expense. Um, especially with buying two. If I sell all the yarn, 
it works out. It means I buy less yarn to dye next batch, but I was already going to buy less yarn for my next dyeing thing anyway. Um, which is for another episode. I'm going to go into that in another episode. Um, cause I'm still trying to work, work it out exactly. Um, but anyway, I've rambled for long enough. Let's look at, let's look at fiber. I told you guys I was going to show you my fiber collection. And when I said that, I said I didn't have a lot and it wouldn't take very long. And then I came in here the other night and pulled it all out. And the impulse shopper in me, y'all, I have more fiber than I thought I did. So along with that, it got me thinking, do I really need to go to any fiber festivals this year? Because <laughs> I was planning on going to Flock. I was planning to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool and maybe Rhinebeck again. And I was going to look at Yellow Springs. Um, obviously not going to Yarn Con because I didn't think about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was going to go to Flock. And you know what? You 2 Yarn's going to be a Flock. Um, so yeah, if, if you guys, if you watch me and you hear me talk about you two yarn, how much I like their yarn, they're going to be a flock. So get you some, um, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot anyway. Yeah. I, you guys have seen the yarn wall. I have yarn. And now that I've pulled out fiber, I have fiber. I don't need any more stuff. And I know a lot of people go to those events to mingle with like-minded folk. I'm not a very, I go to shop. <laughs> like I like seeing people and you know, I have made friends within the fiber community and I like seeing them, but I'm not a social person. So I go to buy stuff. <laughs> so I don't need to buy any more stuff. I do kind of still want to go to Flock, though, mostly because I've never been to Seattle. I've been to Portland. I've never been to Seattle. So I feel like I should go and then I should drive to Portland and go to Multnomah. But the thing with that is my original thing with Flock was I was going to fly into Portland and hang out and do all the things I want to do there and then drive up to Seattle and then go home from there. But my vacation time is not planned out that way. So I would have to go to flock first and then fly down to Portland because of the timing of it. Um, for my job, I can't take off certain days of the month because of, you know, cutoffs and whatnot. So <laughs> I'd have to go to Seattle and then Portland, which I feel like would tire me out. Um, so I'm still debating. I haven't like scheduled anything for that yet. I haven't like bought tickets or anything. Um, for Maryland Sheep and Wool, I bought a ticket to Yarn Centric, but I haven't bought plane tickets to go to Maryland yet. And like I said, now I'm like, do I really need to? With Maryland, it's more of a social thing because like, I do know people in Maryland now. Um, <laughs> and I can drive down to Richmond and see my buds, um, my peeps, and maybe my family. Um... Well, I'd have to go to North Carolina for that. And that's a longer drive, but whatever. Um, well, I have family in Virginia too, but I don't really talk to most of them. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Should I go to the festivals or not go? I don't know. I don't need to spend any more money. I know that. Anyway, <laughs> when I decided I wanted to learn how to spin, I bought fiber that I don't care about to practice on because I know like Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks from crocheting and knitting with it it's not my yarn of choice I find it itchy um but to practice with I figured it would be fine and then if I actually came out with yarn <laughs> I could use it in like a weaving or something or some art project or whatever but not for like a garment so I have, and I've shown this before, but I'll show it again in case you're new. Uh, this is Wool the Andes Unspun Roving. This is Amber Heather. I got to cover up the things so the thing focuses. Where did I put that little black thing? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. I've got Amber Heather. 
Oh, there it, it was there for a second. I gotta cover up Jennifer Connelly. All right, Amber Heather, Delft Heather. Uh, Garnet Heather. And Onyx Heather, which bothers me because it's not black. Onyx is black. This is gray. Um, and those are like, I want to say seven, seven or so dollars. Um, and then for my own personal dyeing use, I've been, I bought Stroll Roving. And the Stroll Roving is Superwash Merino and Nylon. And here's my thing with spinning. When you first start spinning, they tell you that you want to use toothier yarns to start off with so you get the hang of things and it's easier to do. It's not. <laughs> In my personal experience, the slicker yarns are easier for me to do than the... Peruvian Highland wool, which is toothier. I have a harder time drafting this than I do this. This is easier for me. Um, same thing with, with my Turkish, uh, my Turkish spindle class, the fiber they gave me to spin for that. I swapped out for Malabrigo, which is Merino. Like I'm the opposite of everyone else, apparently. But yeah, so this is Stroll. Um, but yeah. And I'm going to buy some more because um, this is... Oh, my thumb. This is the last one I have to dye. So I need some more. Um, yeah, so I'm going to buy some more Superwash Roving to dye. And I'm sure somebody's going to ask, am I going to sell dyed roving? I don't think so. I'm just dying it for myself, honestly. Um, yeah, the fiber thing is going to be for me, I think. Because I don't like, kind of like the, what's it called? The Suri and the, the what's it called? Mohair, that kind of stuff. I'm afraid that I might felt something and I'm not comfortable enough with doing that type of stuff to sell it to other people. I do have some sorry for the trunk show that I dyed. I think there's like three different colorways of sorry. Do you guys want to see? I know I said this was going to be a fiber episode, but you want to see some stuff? Since I'm here and I don't have anything else to do today, because I have groceries and I don't need to go anywhere. Um, although I might go to West 7th. Well, <laughs> I need to get some more Primrose. The yarn I used for this, I want to get some more to put back in the stash. Um, is this the right bin? No. That's why I don't see it. Okay. This is the yarn that's already labeled. Let me move this out of the way. Ugh. Oh, my thumb hurts. And I slept with my brace on. I don't understand. Ah, this is the one. Soul glow. <laughs> um, tie this one. This is um the plan. I died. All right, so I died this while thinking about Fraggle Rock and I can't decide if I want it to be the dozers or if I just want to call it Fraggle Rock. Cause you remember the dozers with the little, little neon looking top hats and whatnot. And cause yeah, neon. <laughs> so dyed that for Fraggle Rock. Um, baskets in the light. Oh. I have too much stuff in here. Where's the green? I knew I dyed a green. Where did I put it? Ugh. Oh, maybe it's in this basket. Oh, yeah. It's in this basket. Oh, I dyed this green. Where's my... 
I just had to think. <laughs> yeah, I dyed this green, whatever, it's fine. Um, and then I dyed this one that I'm probably keeping these because I only dyed two. Gamork. It's like gray and black. Gamork. Gamork. Never ending story. The wolf. Gamork. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep these. Um, but yeah, I dyed Surrey Alpaca just to see if I could. And I think it's fine. I don't think I felt it anything or whatever. I don't think. So yeah, I think I'm going to put this in the yarn crawl, but I'm probably going to be like, you know, I might discount it or something like just in case there's issues with it. I don't think there are though. Maybe I'll just sell it normal price and be like, you know, if you have any issues with it, I will refund you. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I died. Those. But these are for me. And I told you guys I would show you the boucle that I dyed for myself. This is it. Isn't it pretty? If it'll focus. So I dyed that for myself. And I dyed these for myself. This isn't boucle though. Dyed these for myself. And I dyed I dyed it on fingering weight for the yarn crawl, but the DK I dyed for myself. Um and I had some one of a kinds. Dyed this one of a kind boucle. Focus. There we go. Not pretty. I might keep this. I don't know. <laughs> what else is in here? Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm going to show you for that. Anyway, yeah. And I have like Soul Glow and Sister to the Fates. Black. Um, yeah. Okay, fiber. <laughs> Let's talk about fiber. Oh, sure. So uncomfortable today. Um I've been chatting for too long. <laughs> I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back. I'll just get my head straight. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> I said, all right, so the goal of this video was to show my fiber stash and I have talked about everything except my fiber stash. So here we go and maybe I'll timestamp it so you can skip ahead and get to the fiber stash. And this is doing weird focusing things. Let's yeah, pull it off of Jennifer Connelly's face. It'll stay focused. Now it's looking at David Bowie. Oh, I need to move the pictures. Now you can't see David Bowie, you can only see me. There we go. Look at the little square staying in focus. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to start off with the fiber that I received from the seller of the um, Shacked Sidekick Wheel. And this is the Hidaway Farm Shetlands and Icelandics and Garden Sunrise. And it's a little smushed. God, my hand hurts. Where did that put the black thing? It's got fire star in it. Isn't that pretty? So yeah, there's that. Shows all my practice fiber. Making sure there's no fiber over there. Okay. Then I have the fiber that I used for my spinning class instead of the fiber that I was given. <laughs> yeah. This is Malabrigo Noob in the Aguas colorway. Aguas. And they also have, there's, all right, so there's Malabrigo Noob, which is roving five yards, combed top, hand dyed, 100% merino wool. There is also now Malabrigo Cloud, which is weird because I believe Noob means cloud or Nube, however you say it. I think it means cloud, but there is also a Malabrigo Cloud that's super wash merino roving. 
might buy some of that. I have to see if they have it natural and I have to compare the price to Knit Picks Roving. But then the Malabrigo will be 100% Merino and the Knit Picks is 75, 25, I think. I don't know what that was, it just fell down. Yes, 75, 25. So the Knit Picks Roving is, <laughs> where is it? Uh, 75% fine superwash merino, 25% nylon. Okay. The Malabrigo Noob is 100% merino wool. And the Malabrigo Cloud, which I haven't bought yet, is, a, I believe, 100% superwash merino. But this is Aguas. And this is what I was using for my spinning class for the Turkish spindle. And now that I'm not, now that I'm more comfortable with my e-spinner, I bought some more Malabrigo Noob Aguas so I have enough to spin for socks or whatever, depending on how thin I'm able to spin. Um, so I got that. And since I showed that, let's look at the Malabrigo braids that I bought. And I bought all of these once I decided to buy the spinning wheel. So these are new acquisitions. I bought a lot of them. Because <laughs> we all know I like Malabrigo. I told y'all I have more fiber than I thought I did, right? <laughs> and I thought I bought two of these, but it turns out I only bought one, which means I need to buy more. Because um, it's black. I bought black. Because <laughs> of course I did. Um, and then get all this out of the way. This is, this is Aguas. So a second skein of Aguas. And then Deep Ocean. Potion. And the funny thing is, these are yarns that I have in my stash already. <laughs> Marte. I have like six skeins of Marte yarn. Um, Cirrus. Chameleon. And it's funny because my chameleon looks totally like my chameleon is like primary colors and this is very muted and chill. Which I was not expecting, but it's fine. And then I've shown this. I bought this when I took my spinning class. This is Nubecita, which is basically all of these yarns in little chunks. Um, does it say what all the colorways are? Oh, it doesn't. That's weird. All right, so these are mixed colors that are either test colors or off color. Oh. So, all right, they look similar to colorways that already exist from Alabrigo, but I guess they were off, so they have little bundles of them. Because this one looks like Candome. Did I thought I bought Candome? Did I not buy Candome? Weird. That's my favorite one. Um, yeah, this looks, like, this looks like Candome. This looks like Aguas. This looks like Deep Ocean. This looks like, um, where is it? This looks like Chameleon. So yeah, this looks like the colorways that I have, but I guess they're off colors. Oh, okay. Let's stick this back in there. So I have the label. Okay. But I figure for color changing yarn, I'm probably gonna use this because then I can just split split the little bundle in half. Okay. So that's my Malabrigo fiber. And then I did I buy this during the yarn crawl or just randomly? I think I bought this during the yarn crawl. I don't remember. 
I don't remember. This is uh, Shop Fancy. This is Fancy Fibers, Badlands. Fancy Fibers is no longer open. Um, that's a, Well, their physical storefront is no longer open, I should say. Um, it's a local. It was a local fiber and weaving store. Um, but this is Badlands Corydale. Badlands National Park. Like that. And then this is a new acquisition. This is Frabjous Fibers, Three Feet of Sheep. And I thought it would be a cool um, gradient yarn. This is not the color I expected because the one in the picture looked a little bit darker than this. So I feel like I bought the wrong color. But I think it'll look really oops, little, <laughs> it'll look really pretty paired with like a gray. So if like I spin all of this and then I spin a gray and apply the two together, I think it would look really pretty. Because uh, the gray will tone it down a bit, I think. Like a light gray. What do you think? Or should I just leave it this color? I don't know. Or like an oatmeal. Oh, my hand hurts. <laughs> all right, so that's those. I had all this fit in here. This way. Oh no, the bag opened. Okay. These go here. And these go in there. And then I bought Rolags from the Wooly Witch on Etsy. I mentioned this in one of my podcasts. This is Falcor, you guys. This is Falcor. Isn't it beautiful? This one, oh, did I say what Three Feet of Sheep was? It's BFL top, BFL top. This Falcor is Merino, Firestar, Angelina, and Mohair. Isn't it pretty? I bought this because when I took my spinning class, they mentioned the Wooly Witch, and that's how I found them on the Etsy. Um, but she mentioned that spinning from Rolex um, could be easier than like a fiber braid. So I bought some Rolex. I have to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> and then I saw this one. This is Book of the Dead. Uh, this is Merino Bamboo Firestar. Isn't that pretty? Refocus. There we go. But those are pretty. And then, <laughs> so those are new. And I'll try to get these back in the way they were so I can put the lid back on. I think everything puffed back up. Uh, this I got at Paradise Fibers and it is Game of Thrones themed. So I had to. This is He Who Knows Nothing which is like black and gray and purple and white. It's really pretty. And it is 75% wool and 25% mulberry silk. It's a song of wool and silk. And they had a couple different ones. There's these ones. There was one for the Night King. I don't remember what it's called. And there's one for Daenerys. They were like super, super blue. Um, like too bright in my opinion so I didn't get those but I got the darker ones this is another one from that collection and it's not today what do we say to death um and it's black and it's really pretty fawny tan and gray not gorgeous I was just imagining how those would spin up together. It just looks pretty and I had to buy it. But again, these are Merino silk. Um, and I learned that there are different kinds of silk. So this is mulberry silk. And that's this bin. my thumb okay and then I got Ashford Merino 
silk, and this is 80% New Zealand Merino, 20% silk. It doesn't say what kind of silk. And this is the cinnamon colorway. Where did I buy this? I bought this from the Woolery, and I just thought it would spin up really pretty. It's this one. Do I need the black thing again? Where did I put it? <laughs> I don't know where I put it. Anyway, hands. Come on. There we go. Isn't that pretty? With all the colors and stuff. Focus. There we go. I just thought it would spin up really cool. I think I'm going to do this next on the e-spinner. <laughs> Now that I've got the hang of the e-spinner, I'm going to use these. I'm going to, for the wheels, I'm going to practice with this stuff. Or one of the Malabrigo. I might use that Malabrigo braid I have left, the Malabrigo Noob and the Aguas that I already have open. I might practice with that if I'm struggling with the Peruvian. But this is next for the e-spinner. I've already split it into little bundles to use. <laughs> so yeah, that's next. Um, all right, so we went over these. This was supposed to go in there. I'm trying to keep everything together. Um, I might buy another new braid because like I said, I thought I bought Candome and that's one of my favorite Malabrigo colors. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna buy Candome. And yeah, I already have yarn in those colorways, but I feel like with me spinning it myself, it's gonna create a different look than the yarn because you know it's going to be hand spun so it's going to create a different look than the yarn that you buy from Malabrigo regular does that make sense because if you think about it it's already spun in the yarn before they dye it so the color is going to look different when you're spinning the fiber am I making sense okay <laughs> and then when I bought my eel six spinning wheel I got a fiber sampler from Quixotic Fibers. These are available online if you're interested. This is the Spinner's Fiber Sampler Pack. This is number two, and you get 20 grams of each fiber. So this one is Dibble Rambouillet Comb Top, Black Jacob, White Kent Romney, Perindale, Cheviot, Shetland Moret, Finn, and Oatmeal BFL. And I've shown this before, so I'm not gonna go through all of them again. Um, I will pull one out. Here's the one I really liked. Where's the one that I really liked? The fin, the fin. Focus, isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. Okay, so it's just little bitty bundles of different fibers. And I feel like this is the one I should play with um, so I can get a feel of like what fibers I like. But then I'm like, what am I going to do with them, you know? Oh, I guess like, well, there's 20 grams. I could do like 10 gram minis, like once I apply them together. I don't know. But it's a sampler fiber. It's what it says on the box. Um, and then... Also from Quixotic Fibers. I showed this a couple of episodes ago. This is just a giant thing of Rambouillet. Or a giant, a giant thing to me. And I got this for when I'm comfortable with dyeing fiber. I'm going to dye my own Rambouillet. So yeah, this is for me. I mean, all of it's for me, but... This is for me dyeing. <laughs> okay, and... I'll show those last because those are like special. Um, I've shown these before, but you know, I'm putting all the fiber together for this episode. This is, because I think I bought these during the yarn crawl. I either bought these during, well, I bought some of these during the yarn crawl and some of these during festivals. Um, this is yarn crawl. This is Butterfly Girl Designs, Blackbird, 60% Merino, 30% Bamboo, 10% Nylon. And they're on Etsy, Butterfly Girl Designs. But I got it because blue. And shiny. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's still trying to focus on David Bowie. Dang it. Thought I had this fixed. It's because Benny knocked the camera over. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I saw the comment that says don't move Bowie. 
But guys, <laughs> can't focus on stuff if it's focusing on stuff behind me. I thought this was really pretty. And see, a lot of these I set aside because everybody told me that I couldn't spin the finer fibers as a newbie. But I feel like that's similar to where everybody told me to start off knitting with um, scarves and things like that. But, you know, it didn't catch for me until I started knitting socks and sweaters. So I feel like... I feel like people should tell people to like try a few things and figure out what works for you. Um, Cause for me, like I said, with spinning, the silkier, like finer fibers were easier for me to do. So I don't know. Again, I could be doing it wrong. We don't know. Um, <laughs> let's see. These are my bags of fiber. Um, this was from, is this from Fiber Fest? This is from a festival. This is Gritty Knits and Merino Silk Corydale Scraps with Firestar and Angelina. So it's a bat. And it's purple. Isn't that pretty and sparkly? See, now it's focusing on what I wanted to focus on. <laughs> purple. That one. Oh, this is all right. So I showed this during my unboxing videos for the wheels, but I didn't open it. This is the Black Jacob or not Black Jacob, Black Welsh wool. Sorry, I do have Black Jacob. Um, this is Black Welsh wool um, from the UK. Well, Welsh. <laughs> I got this from the Fibrous when I bought my wheel and natural black wool is actually brown like black cats are brown in the sunlight mm. <laughs> so I have three bags of this because I figured it was the closest thing I'm ever gonna get to having a you know naturally black yarn um, I, I believe when I read it I think black Welsh is the darkest one darkest of the black wools there is a black merino sheep they are rare-ish and I think they're only in Spain. I have yet to find their wool. Um, <laughs> oh, I definitely got these at either Maryland Sheep and Wool or Rhinebeck. I think I got one at Maryland Sheep and Wool and one at Rhinebeck. These are the Loop Bats. This one is Nocturnal, which is Merino, Angelina, and Nylon. Vampire Vibes. That's that one. I'm going to lose the thingy. Go back on here. And I'm going to tie you on so you don't fall off again. And see, like, just tying things. This hurts. Um, this one is Cave Merino Angelina Nylon, and it's like a mauve with tan and gray. Focus, there we go. But you see like this really pretty grayish mauve color? If I can get it to focus. There we go. It's grayish mauve color. I just thought it was really pretty. These would make good um, fades. Or this one would make a good fade. Like a color changey color work fade. With like an oatmeal sweater. Mmm. Oh, no. Nope, lost the thing. Okay. That's the loop bats. And then I got... This is from... TFW Fiber Fest, I believe. No. No. This is from Maryland Sheep and Wool. Yeah, this is from Maryland Sheep and Wool. This is Feederbrook Farms BFL. Focus. There we go. Sparkly bits. There's quite a lot of this. Eight ounces. 
can definitely get something out of that. I thought I had a thing of blue. I thought I bought a giant one of these that was blue. Did I put it back? Maybe I put it back. Because it's not over here and I don't have any more fiber in the closet. So there's that. And that's all of that. Okay. Now all that's left are these special ones that I bought. Not that they're not all special. This was from Fiberfest, I believe. I've shown it before. This is a mixture of things, so I don't know what's in it. It says it may contain wool, alpaca, mohair, silk, bamboo, tinsel, rayon, nylon, sari silk, cotton, firestar, angelina. It, no telling. But I think it's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. I would have a whole entire, I know this isn't enough to do it, but I would make it a sweater out of this one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> I love this one. Um, love it. Love it. I think it's my favorite my favorite in my stash so this one won't be spun until I'm super comfortable with spinning because I don't want to mess I really don't want to mess that one up it's gorgeous gorgeous um <laughs> and then these are recent purchases from Etsy and I have her card oh I don't know what I did with her card Thursdays, one Thursday, one Thursdays. I'll put it here. But focus. There we go. So pretty. So pretty. And then to offset it. <laughs> My plan is to ply these together. Is that silly? Will it look stupid? I don't know. I want to ply them together. I want marled. I want marled yarn with these. I think it would be super cool. Super cool. Super cool. These are so, they smell so sheepy. Okay, so that's those. And I think that's my fiber stash. That's my fiber stash, my friends. Again, a lot more fiber than I thought I had. <laughs> but that's mostly because I have so many Malabrigo braids. And again, I'm going to go see if West 7th has the Candome one. Because uh, I have to go by there to buy the Primrose yarn. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go do that. That's all I got. That's all I got. Um, but again, I'm going to put the break, or not the break, put the... Um, drive band on the sidekick today and I'm going to try to use it and I know you guys said you wanted to see a video <laughs> of me spinning do you really <laughs> I don't I like I won't mind showing a video but I don't want somebody to be like hey you're doing that wrong like let me make my own mistakes <laughs> um I mean I could show you a video of me doing the e-spinner because I know what I'm doing with that one um now I do but yeah, I mean, once I get the hang of the wheels, maybe I'll post a video of me spinning on the wheels. But right now I don't have the hang of the wheels, like trying to do the thing. The th All right. So here's the thing with the e-spinner, like S Z, it's a button <laughs> with those. I have to like start the spin in a certain direction. And then like I was trying to do it on the joy and I kept changing the wheel direction. So it kept doing this. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I got to feel trickling. Ugh. I gotta figure it all out. I feel like, I still feel like the sidekick is gonna be easier than the joy for me, but we shall see. Uh, but anyway, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Let me double check one more bag. Yeah, that was everything. So yeah. <laughs>
next episode will be a normal knit, normal knitting crochet whatever episode and will there be acquisitions yes um i got my first jimmy beans wool malabrigo box which yellow um <laughs> i think it's gonna end up being um well part of it is gonna end up being in one of my monthly giveaways I'm probably going to give away the O snap bag and the pink yarn and I'm going to keep the green one because I opened it I ordered something from Jimmy Bean's wool and I thought that's what it was but it was my club so I meant to open the club on the podcast but I've already opened it so anyway um so yeah next episode will be normal <laughs> and there might be me showing something that I spun or whatever if I've spun anything um in that episode but it'll be you know back to normal and I'll do the movie thing that I did last time um there aren't as many things as there were in the last video where I was like this is everything I watched this week because I went on a Downton Abbey binge because I'd never watched that show before and then I watched it like every day for a week and now I'm done and I watched the movie which I feel like was a money grab um <laughs> and kind of unnecessary but I mean I watched it it's okay um, I enjoyed the show. That dude, Carson, I need him to narrate some books for me. That guy's got a great voice. Great voice. Um, anyway. <laughs> and I might, um, well, maybe not this one yet, but I might make some coasters <laughs> with these and I'll show those on the next episode. But yeah, I hadn't meant to do this episode so soon, but I woke up, I was in a mood. Here you go. Spinning episode. And I'm sorry I rambled so much at the beginning, but that's what I do. So, yeah. I'm going to go to West 7th Wool and Trader Joe's. And I'm going to take the dogs because it's nice outside and they want to be in the car. So, yes. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.